Whenever you hire a driver, doing a road test is one of those key components to making sure that the individual that you're putting behind the wheel in your truck is qualified to drive it and actually knows how. Even though there's some exceptions out there that says certain drivers don't have to do it, I definitely believe all drivers should go through some type of a road test. Welcome back to DOT University. I'm Ryan, the DOT guy, and in this video, we're gonna be going over those key components that you need to know when hiring a driver and doing their road test. Now go ahead and subscribe to this channel and hit that like button, that'll really help us out, and ring that bell, that way you can get informed anytime we put up new content that can help you to stay off the radar. When you are hiring a new driver, one of the key components that you do is the road test. And that is how you're truly gonna know on day one that that driver can actually drive the commercial motor vehicle you're putting them in. Whether it's a CDL type vehicle of either a class A, B, or C, or if they're driving pickups and trailers. This is the only way that you can know, and it amazes me how many companies go about this extremely lazily, or they don't do it at all, or when they do do it, they just pencil whip them. You wanna make sure you and your team are doing the right job. Now, as usual, we got to get into the regulations. In 49 CFR 391.11 B8, this is the regulation that lists the basic qualifications for all drivers, whether they're CDL or non-CDL. And we're only we're going to only be talking about point number eight in this one. In another video, I will outline the rest of those points. But in this first one, 391.11. A says that a person shall not drive commercial motor vehicle unless he or she is qualified to drive that vehicle. And in B, where the list is, we're going to talk about point number eight. It says that they have successfully completed a driver's road test and have been issued a certificate of road test in accordance with 395, correction, 391.31, or has presented an operator's license or a certificate of road test, which a motor carrier employs them, has accepted as the equivalent of road test. Now, Hold on, don't stop the video right there thinking, oh, well, we got a license. The driver has a, a driver's license. We can just forget this because that is not what that means. Now, you're going to want to stick around to the end of this video because I will explain that point in great detail because there are some exceptions as to who does not have to have a road test. And you're going to want to learn what those are, especially if you're going to be claiming them. Now, continuing with this, under 391.31, that was just referenced in that previous rule, it says that a person shall not drive a commercial motor vehicle without first successfully completing a road test. And then it says that the road test shall be given by a motor carrier, a person that you designate. You want to have, you don't want to just walk through the office and say, who, who's the lucky person today that's going to do this? Who is it that knows how to do it? And it's a good idea to train them, which is what this video is for. They need to know exactly how to do this test so that they do it correctly, and it's not just pencil whipped. So it says as an owner operator, you gotta find a third party person. So that one's extremely difficult. You know, good luck with that guys. That's what my company Front Range Compliance is for. We can help you with that. You know, or maybe you could take one of those exceptions and we'll talk about that at the end of this video. The test must be given you know, in the type of vehicle or equipment that that person's going to be driving. So, for instance, um, a few months ago, I was doing an audit on a company, and I went through and saw that they were doing some road tests, and I saw some Class A tank vehicle drivers that did a road test in a Chevy S10 because that's what the vehicle was there that they had um, in the yard. Well, an S10 old Chevy is not even a commercial motor vehicle, so it does have to be in the type of vehicles that you're hiring them for. Now, the road test has got to be of sufficient duration to enable the examiner to evaluate that driver applicant. We're going to want to make sure that they're on hills, curves, grades, turns. If grade crossings are an issue for you, you want to make sure that you're including that. Uh, left turns and right turns, so on and so forth. Backing, parking, I can go on and on and on. Okay, let's talk about the examiner's qualifications. Now, whoever's completing the road test, they got to be qualified. So, number one, you know, this one's pretty obvious, but, you know, we have to tell you because it does happen. It, they have to be licensed for the class and type of vehicle that they're, they're operating. In addition, if it's an endorsement type vehicle, such as tank or hazardous material passengers, we want to make sure that they have the proper endorsements also. That's super important because sometimes we display or we find a driver who's displaying bad driver practices and we have to stop the test for safety. So we wanna make sure that we can take over and drive that vehicle legally. 
Number three, you want to make sure that you have your license, your medical certificate with you in your possession. Now for non-CDL drivers, remember you all still have to carry your medical certificate, not or CDL drivers, you are good. It's a, it's part of your driver's license, license, even though most drivers still carry their license uh, and their medical card in their possession. All right, let's get into completing the road test. Number one, the examiner. You need to be courteous, be objective, strict, but yet fair. Okay. Um, these guys are nervous. They're coming out. They're going to be getting into the truck. Um, you know, so we want to try to put them at ease. And I'll talk about that in just a little bit. They're going to make a few mistakes. Be courteous about it. Try to coach them. Communicate your instructions clearly and timely. There's absolutely nothing worse than going out on a, a trip and you're coming right up on your turn and all of a sudden the examiner wakes up and says, oh, make a left right here. Okay, uh, that could be extremely dangerous. Be a coach. Take a moment, offer constructive advice. Things are going to help build this prospective employee to become a better future employee of your company. This is day one. We want to show them the way of your company. We're a fair company but we're a strict company and we expect things to be done right. If you go out and do this haphazardly, chances are that's exactly how they'll treat their employment. Now represent your company in a positive manner. Don't be out there bad mouthing other supervisors. If you're having a bad day, keep it to yourself. We want that new employee to come in and be positive with a good outlook on what your company has to offer. Observe the driver, okay? You're not on a sightseeing tour. I did a, an observation of a road tester here a couple years ago, and we were out driving around through Denver, and the actual examiner was sitting in the passenger seat, literally the window down, arm out the window, and he was looking at everything except for the driver. Now, I was watching the driver from the back seat because it was in like a 550 and a trailer combination, so I was making notes on the driver, and he also was driving with his window down and his uh, left arm out the window, one hand like he was cruising main. Um, you know, we want to make sure that we're seating, kind of canted, looking at that driver and taking notes. You don't want to be filling out the report during that, but definitely bring a notepad so you can make some observations. Now, when you get started, meet the driver, meet that driver, prospective driver, Ask them to review their license and medical card. We want to make sure that they have them with them. But we also want to make sure that they have the proper class and endorsements that they need to have um, with them. If they're a non-CDL person. They do need to make sure that they have their medical cards um, in their possession. So look for any restrictions, anything like that. Look for restrictions on the medical card. You know, if it says they're supposed to wear corrective lenses and don't have glasses, ask them about the contacts. You know, if they tell you, well, um, I had... Uh, you know, the eye surgery at Lasix, then they can't drive. They have to go back and get their license corrected. So you want to make sure you check that because if you get pulled over and they get found in violation, even though it's a road test, it will be a strike against your, your company's uh, safety performance record. Um, ensure that the person has the proper class and endorsements. Okay, I kind of already mentioned that. Now, one of the things that I, I skipped up above is the SPE, Skills Performance Evolved. If you are hiring somebody with an SPE, a skills performance evaluation, read through the eval, read through the actual document, see what their the vehicle needs to be equipped with. It might need to be with, equipped with a proper steering knob or something else. Make sure that you uh, get that vehicle ready for them so that they can drive. Now, fill out the driver's road test evaluation documents. Go through and get the initial information for that driver on there, but don't fill in the rest of the road test until you get through. That's what a notepad is for. Uh, those those documents are sometimes pretty lengthy. They're most definitely not in order. So just take notes on what happens and then fill it out later. Now, when you, you meet and you start to greet this driver, you want to put them at ease. Start talking to them, strike up a conversation, make sure that they're a little bit more comfortable in, you know, that, that uneasiness of new person and getting tested and that kind of thing. Explain the test, explain what the route's going to be, tell them what the automatic failures, you know, if you do this, it's going to be an automatic failure, or what the protocol is, such as, if this were to happen, I'm going to ask you to stop and safely pull over, and then I will take over the driver controls of the vehicle, and instruct the applicant to proceed as if they were starting their shift, and then ask you for assistance if they need it, such as a spotter when they're backing, or so on and so forth. Now, this is important to have this conversation with them because a lot of times when we get into the pre-trip, they turn around and they start talking to you saying, well, if right here, I would check this, I would check this. We want to make sure to reinforce with them, if that's what you're going to check, then check that. And then, you know, tell, just vocalize with me what you're checking as you're checking it. Okay, when they do the pre-trip, check the vehicle fluids. Um, <clears throat> make sure that they 
make them couple to a trailer. We want to see how they do it, see if they know how to proper, whether it's a, you know, a ball hitch, drag behind trailer, a gooseneck, a pendle hook, you know, or a fifth wheel plate, any of those coupling devices. We want to make sure that they properly know how to do it, lock the devices and hook everything up. Make sure that they ask for a spotter when backing up. Um, and, you know, in, in, especially in the bumper hitch connections, of course, with a fifth wheel or a gooseneck, that might not be necessary. Now, complete the end cab and walk around inspection to pre-trip. I'll get into some of those procedures in another video. If you find vehicle defects, stop. Find a different vehicle. If you go out and drive with known vehicle defects that are found and you say, hey, let's drive anyways, you just taught that employee, hey, the pre-trip inspection doesn't matter at this company. We drive things that are broken. But if you make a show of it, then that person learns on day one, we fix our stuff. Okay, and that's gonna really help with your, your on-road performance. Now, when you do the road test, you may be driving with an empty trailer, which is obviously a good idea, but if it does have cargo on it, make sure that the cargo is secured, make sure that they know how, and you might even coach them on how to do proper cargo securement. You can see in the pictures there, I've got a bobcat with the chains just laying on the deck. It might be a good idea to stage that, that vehicle that way to see how they respond to it and how they go to hook that, that, that vehicle up. Check your straps if you're doing flatbed services and your cargo securement devices. Make sure that the driver's checking them to make sure that they're not damaged. Now complete in-yard maneuvers, okay? Before you put your life in this person's hand and decide to go out on the highway running around, um, do, let's do some maneuvers in the yard first just to see if they do know how to actually control that vehicle, um, backing, pulling forward, left turns, right turns, so on and so forth. So in-yard maneuvers, first thing we're going to have them couple the vehicle, hook it up, whether it's a fifth wheel plate, gooseneck, or ball hitch, Okay. Make sure everything is connected. And if they make mistakes connecting, such as safety chains or hooking up that breakaway brake, make sure you go through and you show them how to do it. The breakaway brake is a good idea to teach them how to do the safety functions. Now you can see um, on the slides that we have here, um, with these, these breakaway brakes, usually on smaller trailers like non-CDL combinations, a lot of drivers don't know how to actually check these. So make sure you run them through the procedures. I will be doing a video here in the future to explain actually how to do it. Now that breakaway brake, it does need to be connected directly to the actual towing unit. So see how they have looped this around and hooked to it? Whereas this would be an out of service violation if you got pulled over because they have this breakaway brake cable actually wrapped around um, the clasp on that uh, safety chain. Now make sure everything is good, make sure the safety chains aren't damaged and the rest of it's good. The next thing is get in and check your turning. This is uh, important on any types of trailers that you have. Obviously it's a, the longer the combination, the harder the turning radius because that trailer tracks to the inside. But again, we wanna make sure that the driver knows how to maneuver through the yard and we can check to make sure that they're able to, to steadily control that vehicle. You also want to do some backing drills. Now, some good ideas, straight line backing. It's one of those tasks that seems easiest, easy enough unless they're not used to driving a trailer, then it might be near impossible. Okay. Another one is going to be the 90 degree alley dock. The offset, okay, if it's a class A vehicle, you're going to need about 140 feet for that. If it's a class B type vehicle, you're going to need about 90 feet. But it's always a good idea to practice that offset to see if they know how to do it. And lastly, practice your parking. Make sure that they know how to get that vehicle in and out of those tight spots. Now, when you get out from there, once you're comfortable and they know how to drive, this is when we're going to actually leave the yard and we're going to hit the, the road. Now, Every one of your yards should have a mapped out route, okay? You don't want to just go out and just go out and say, hey, make a right, make a right, make a right. All right, go ahead and pull back into the yard because you just all you did was drive around the block. That's not going to be sufficient. We want to get out there. We want to see left turns, right turns, hills, curves, grades, passing, being passed and overtaken. Uh, if you are hazmat or passengers, grade crossings are going to be a good idea. So find your route that works for you and for your area. Map it out and then whoever is qualified to do the road test in your area or for your office needs to follow that same route. Now, this was just simple. I just laid this out on Google Maps. I just went through uh, and clicked each of the, the, or the, the locations and I just followed it all the way through until I got my map laid out the way I want it to. Um, you can see we start where the red is here in the middle of the screen and then the arrow shows that we kind of move up 
and then we follow and we go on out and we work that that route. Now this is a route that's going to take probably about you know 17 to 20 minutes. Again, there's no time on the road test. We read through that regulation when we started this. It just says it has to be a, a sufficient duration for you to to check their their abilities and make sure that they properly can safely safely operate that vehicle. So again, once we get out there, you're going to start the trip. Um, again, hopefully they're a little bit more relaxed now. You get, you know, sit down, make sure you all put your seatbelts on, and then follow that mapped route. Okay, when you do the route, like I said earlier, about 20, 30 minutes, which is about what that would take. You got hills, curves, grade crossings, acceleration, deceleration, starts, stops, left turns and right turns. You know, highways, if you're on mountain passes, you're probably going to want to take them up those mountain passes to make sure they know how to do that. Speed zones are important because of the step up, step down. Most common where drivers are getting speeding, uh, pulled over for speeding. You know, try to avoid school zones or heavy populated areas. Again, we don't know who this individual is that's applying for us. It would be absolutely devastating if they, while you were in the vehicle with them, if they took that vehicle and tried to commit a serious crime um, with that. Now, as you go through and do this, like I already said, make sure you provide clear and concise instructions. Let them know, you know, at the, if at the next light or two lights ahead, I'm going to have you make a left so that they can get prepared and, and they're there. So give them good, clear advice. Um, if they, you see something that you need to coach them on, whether it's during the pre-trip and or post-trip after the drive or in the middle of the drive provide them some guidance give them plenty of notice for turns and maneuvers coach and provide guidance um, and then document any areas of concerns or things that they've done good um, if you do coach them write that down because that could come into play later on if you hire that driver and the next thing you know they're making mistakes or they're getting involved in an accident you can come back and show that that you've checked this all right now we've done the trip, we're back. We're coming back to the yard, we're gonna end it. Make sure you park the commercial motor vehicle, have them complete a post-trip inspection. Again, positive reinforcement. It reinforces the general safety practices. Have them uncouple and park the trailer if applicable, okay? And if the prospective employee is a pass, take a moment, sit down, recre uh, you know, recap that, that trip with them, highlight the any pr improvements that they need. Um, this is gonna help us establish the company way to make sure that they move forward doing this correctly. You want to complete the uh, road test report at this time, of course, after you release them. Give them, um, once they're hired, you're going to give them a copy of the road test certificate so that they can keep a copy with them and a copy will go in their driver qualification file. Now, if it's a failure, okay, no big deal. Just probably want to dismiss them, okay, if you're at the point to tell them. If you're the person that's going to tell them, yep, yeah, I'm sorry, we're not going to consider you for employment, you can have that conversation with them. If it's going back to HR department, you can dismiss them, tell them that HR will be in contact with them. Complete the road test report, even though they're a failure, document the details on why it was a failure, and then release them, and then HR can handle it. Now, the last point here, point number six, is if the test was stopped due to a safety reason, you've got to make sure that you document the reason why. All right, how come? What are some reasons that we would end the test? Now, this is really up to the examiner. Um, any unsafe practice that they feel that their life is in danger or feel that that person's unqualified, they should stop. Now, here's just a few points that I would definitely consider. Serious traffic offense, okay? We're talking serious speeding. Um, you know, <clears throat> a serious traffic violation of speeding is more than 15 mile an hour. But if you want to stop them because they're they're doing more, I'd probably coach up to that point and you know tell them that that's not tolerated within our company and it'd be a major strike. But I don't know if I'd stop the test for that. Um, you know, 392 violations; those are violations of you know the you know it could be drugs, could be alcohol, it could be you know ill or fatigued, um, it could be use of the cell phone while driving. There's a lot of different things on there, and then you have your other state and local laws. Uh, Driving um, over a curb or a medium, okay, that is an absolute no-no. The last thing that we want to do is send pedestrians flying for their safety or potentially hit somebody. So we got to make sure that that person knows how to maneuver the vehicle and not go up over the hill or the curb. Now, if you're in an area with a really tight intersection, of course, there may be a variance to that, right? As long as we do it safe, maybe we get out with the spotter and make sure it's clear and do it as safe and as slow as possible. Now, if there's a violation of license or medical restriction, I talked about that one earlier, such as that driver that had Lasix but hasn't taken it off of either their license or their medical card, they've got to get that fixed. Or if they tell you, oh, I just forgot my glasses, okay, they, they would need to have that. So you got to check those licenses. 
and then any other safe action that you deem would be necessary. Now the report, there's several different versions that are out there. One of the reports that I really like is this more general, a uh, little bit easier to fill out. You can write a little extra information in there. And then there's another document that is extremely detailed front and back. There's a ton of stuff. I, I see people make mistakes on that because they, they put NA where they should be putting information and they put information where they should be putting NA. Um, again, if you use these documents, just take your time and fill them out correctly. I don't wanna go in as an auditor, I don't wanna go look at every road test you ever have done and just see in the comment section, oh, this is a great driver, he did a really good job, you know, and then two weeks later, the guy's terminated because it's an accident. It's your job to coach them, okay? And then lastly, you wanna make sure you issue a copy. This is like a little wallet card. It's a certificate of a road test just to make sure that that driver has an issue, okay? All right, now I told you to stick around to the end because of this last slide. There was a term equivalent to a road test. Yes, there is situations where drivers can can be hired and you don't have to do a road test. Not a fan. I think uh, when you hire somebody on day one, this is the way you're going to know if they can truly drive that vehicle. I've seen plenty of people with that little card in their hand that don't have the foggiest idea how to drive a commercial motor vehicle or even a regular vehicle at that point. Um, so again, um, go out and do the road test. But if you're going to do this, first off, it has to be a CDL, commercial license. Now, it's not permissible, though, if that CDL is for doubles and triples, those individuals have to have a road test. Okay, And it's not also permissible if it's tank vehicles requiring an endorsement. Okay, So if it's uh, going to need a tank endorsement, then it has you have to do the road test. Now, I want to stress on this. Notice it says this only works... This exception for a CDL person. So if you are getting hired or you're hiring people into non-CDL operations, they 100% have to have a road test. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. So make sure that you're doing that. Now make sure that you also have the, uh, if, if, they, if they give you a road test certificate for the last three years, this is probably the least common um, but it's up to you if you accept it. Me, I don't trust the way other people would do a road test. I'd want to do it myself. Now, even though there's this exception out there, hey, that's it's it's up to you to use it. Um, I would still road test absolutely everybody. We take it serious. I can show them, hey, this is the company's way that we're going to do this. Um, now, also make sure I put a star down there on the bottom. If this exception is used, you have to have a copy of that document in their driver's qualification file. All right. Thank you. Um, you know, best practices, keep your employees and America safe on our roadways. Have a great one. Thanks for watching. Comment below if you have any questions.